Welcome to the Bennington Area VNA and Hospice News and Information. I'm Mark Mealy, Marketing and Fundraising Coordinator for the Bennington Area VNA and Hospice, also known as BAVNA. In October 2014, BAVNA was purchased by the Rutland Area VNA and Hospice. And although we are no longer part of SVMC, we still work collaboratively with the hospital to offer the highest quality care to individuals throughout Bennington County. BAVNA is a local Medicaid certified home health and hospice agency. Currently, we are the only nonprofit VNA and hospice serving Bennington County. How does that differ? Well, BAVNA is governed by a volunteer board of directors, and all the money received goes back into the programs offered to the community. Our services include nursing, therapy, social work, hospice, all of which help to keep patients in the comfort of their own homes. This is the third show of a regular series to inform you of upcoming events, clinics, health news, and information that BAVNA has to offer the community. Today I have with me our guest, Kathleen Pollan, who is the director of the Travel Health Clinic. Welcome. Thank you. So today we're going to be talking about flu clinics and flu shots. So I guess we'll start off with what is the flu? It is a... Um very contagious, nasty respiratory disease that you can pick up from people coughing or sneezing near you or on objects that you are touching. You get a high-grade fever, uh, muscle aches right down to your hair follicles. Sometimes people will end up being hospitalized. It's nothing you want to catch. So if you can take something to prevent it, why wouldn't you? Exactly. Yeah. A a anyone who's ever had the flu before knows the aches, the pains, the fevers, the chills are just, it's not a comfortable thing. Yep. Um, could you tell me a little bit about the influ in influenza A and B viruses? Is there a difference between the two? What, what is that that I'm sure. hearing? Sure. The vaccine is made fresh every year, and what they tried to do is look at what was around the previous year, what is a new migrating or slightly changing virus, and they named them. So currently, there are several A viruses and several B viruses. And in January of every year, um, a large group of health professionals get together and try to decide and determine which viruses are we gonna put in the vaccine. The vaccine takes a very long time to make, and we start preparing it in late winter. Mm -hmm. So this last year, we had, um, a vaccine that had a choice of three, two A's and one B. One of them was the H1N1, known as the swine flu, and then we had a B. Some people opted to get the newer vaccine called the quadrivalent, which is four, two A's and two B's. So it's a broader coverage. This year, they are changing one of the A's and one of the B's based on what we saw last year. So the vaccine this year is ultimately a whole new vaccine, mm -hmm. but it does still include the swine flu. That's still a piece for people to be really interested in because we had such a horrible time with it in 2010. Mm -hmm. So it's still in the vaccine. Well, I might be jumping ahead here, but a question that I have is you mentioned something called quadrivalent. Mm -hmm. Is that the correct pronunciation? That is. So I'm hearing quad four. Um, is that just a standard shot across the board for anybody who's getting the flu shot or are there different variations of the flu shot that are opted for people? That's a good question. There are three different variations of the flu shot. There is a trivalent. That's what had been being given prior to the quadrivalent being introduced a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, that was the standard one across the board. Six years ago, they decided that they wanted to come out with what they call a high dose. Um, that one is geared for only people 65 or older that have very compromised health issues, um, cancer treatments, multiple surgeries, lots of health illnesses, diabetes, heart disease. So it's, we gear that one for people 65 and older. It still only has three of the strains for coverage, but it is four times the potency to really kick your immune system into gear to make the antibodies. As we get older, our immune system gets weaker and we sometimes don't respond. Mm -hmm. So one choice for 65 and older is the high dose mm -hmm. with three strains of coverage. Mm -hmm. The trivalent are the same three strains of coverage, but it's a regular dose, and that's what's given to people six months and older. Mm -hmm. If you're over 65, you can still get the trivalent. And a lot of people are not used to hearing about the quadrivalent. They didn't know it existed. So we're trying to introduce that, but in the interim, we will still offer the trivalent. 
A lot of doctor's offices and clinics are now offering it as well. So each year you're going to hear a little bit more about it. The quadrivalent are two A's and two B's. So you're getting four strains. Mm -hmm. um, last year we saw a significant rise in our numbers in, in people that were asking for that quadrivalent vaccine. And there's no one size fits all. No. Unfortunately, we can't tell which virus might you be around or might your immune system not be able to, you know, go, oh, okay, I can fight that one. So, um, you know, the best thing is to think about your health, um, think about what you've had in the past. Did it work? Did it not work? Um, and that can help gear you towards a direction. Um, certainly at our clinics, if there were any questions, we can answer those questions for you about the vaccine, about you know, which one might match better for you. We don't tell you which one, but we can give you some guidance. Okay, all right. Are there any side effects that people should be aware of uh, when they get the vaccination? Sure. Um, first and foremost, you cannot get the flu from the flu shot. It's an inactivated vaccine. It's just enough of bits and pieces of the flu virus, of the strains that are in that particular vaccine that it will promote antibody building in your system. Mm -hmm. If you get the live vaccine, which is a nasal spray and often geared towards children, you could actually come down with a very mild case of the flu. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people run around thinking, oh, I got my shot, now I've got the sniffles, I got the flu from having my flu shot, I never want it again. Mm -hmm. What people need to understand is that when you get your flu shot, it takes 10 to 14 days for it to fully be protective in your system. So mm -hmm. the day you get it, you start responding to it, building smaller amounts of antibodies. By the time the 10 to 14 days goes by, it will be fully up and running in your system. Mm -hmm. So during that time, you're still susceptible to the flu, and often you have been exposed to it prior to getting your flu shot. So sometimes it's a matter of timing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people still don't believe us that you can't get the flu from the flu shot, but if you think about when we start giving the flu shot, which is normally late September and early October, those are the big months, but you can get the flu shot right up until June 30th of the next year. Okay. Um, but those people are gearing themselves to saying, I don't want it because I got the flu. Mm -hmm. You have to remember 72 hours, it can take before a cold shows its symptoms. Mm -hmm. So if you've been, I don't know, to a school with mm -hmm. lots of kids that, <laughs> do the flag and the sniffles, yeah, you, oh might yes, very, nice yes, exactly. yes. mm -hmm. you might very well have been introduced to it, but you don't get it until two or three days later, and lo and behold, oh, there's a flu clinic today, I'm going to go get my shot. Mm -hmm. And so the timing is just bad. That's the season that flu starts coming around is when we start giving the flu shots. Mm -hmm. So you can't get it from the flu shot. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing that you touched on that I would like to know a little bit more about, what is the difference between the cold, getting a cold, and getting the flu? What are the, what are the differences? The flu, you're going to come down with it suddenly. You could be at the grocery store, and by the time you're coming out of the grocery store, you are feeling horrible. You're tired, you're hot, you're sweating, um, you have muscle aches. It comes on very, very suddenly without any warning. You could go to bed at night and wake up in the middle of the night and Oh, there's the flu. Mm -hmm. A cold often is this insidious little thing that, oh, my nose is a little stuffy, <clears throat> my throat's a little scratchy, my ears are a little plugged. Um, and often you don't have a fever, mm -hmm. let alone a high-grade fever. So those are usually the telltale signs. Mm -hmm. um, other people will get a pounding headache when they have the flu, along with that high fever or a very dry, consistent, hacking cough. Okay. So you're looking for those things to say, hmm, is it the flu or is it a cold? Mm -hmm. um, we always encourage people, if they think that it is the flu, to go to their physician's office. Mm -hmm. um, there are medications you can take that will help you get over the flu faster. Mm -hmm. They've improved them over the years. There's three of them on the market. Um, so, you know, if you think you've had the flu, it is good to go to your doctor. Um, and if you could, it would be great to get them to swab the back of your throat to find out which strain you have because that helps us for the next year as to know whether that virus that we put in the vaccine oh, okay. was a good match. Okay. A lot of times doctors will go, oh yes, you have the flu, it came on suddenly, you have a fever, here's your prescription. Mm -hmm. It is really beneficial to all of us in the United States even 
to know what kind of flu did I have? Did I actually have the flu? Mm -hmm. And they'll send it off to laboratories for testing and that helps us determine what we need to do to make it better for the next year. Gotcha. Well, I'm assuming that the vaccines are the single best method to prevent the flu. What are some other things that people can do? For people that the flu vaccine is either still just too scary of a thought mm -hmm. or um, for some reason you can't have it because of um, something that's going on in your own system. If you've had a very bad allergic reaction to it, you're allergic to eggs, you can't get that particular flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, if you have had what they call Guillain-Barre, you can't get the flu shot um, because you could actually have that again. So oh. there are some people who are limited to it mm -hmm. and those people who don't believe in the flu shot, of, of course, we're telling you wash your hands frequently. Um, people don't realize when you cough, um, six feet, that respiratory droplet stuff can go six feet away. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're at a meeting at the boardroom table and everybody's coughing and sneezing and you're touching and picking up pens and then you have an itchy eye, mm -hmm. you may have very well just now given yourself the flu virus. Mm -hmm. So wash your hands frequently. If people are coughing and sneezing, try to stand to the side of them so they're not coughing on you. Mm -hmm. um, you could wear a protective mask. You mm -hmm. could ask somebody who's coughing and sneezing a lot to wear a protective mask for everybody else around them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is important to stay hydrated, eat a healthy diet, and get sleep. When mm -hmm. you are not doing those things, you can run your immune system down, mm -hmm. and then you're more susceptible to getting any type of a cold. And I would also as assume, too, that it's just as beneficial for people who already know that they've got a bad cold or if they're wandering around with the flu because some of us are diehards, we might not want to take time off from work, we might not have the option to take time off from work or we have to go pick up our kids or something like that. But for the people who know that they could be exposing other people to make sure that they're washing their hands frequently, if they have a handkerchief that they can put up to their their face if they're going to cough Correct. or sneeze because many times I've been in the grocery store or someplace out in public somebody's just come around the corner and without even covering their mouth they've just coughed right on my face and right. it's like oh so you know that's that's another way that you know things can get spread as well so it's just as good for the people who know that they are a carrier at that point in time to stay home stay and home still wash mm -hmm. because you could give it to somebody in your family or someone who stops by but it is really important to stay home if you have that high grade fever you really should not go back to work or school if you're sending your child until 24 hours after they are fever free mm -hmm. so if they go to bed at 9 p.m. and they have a fever you got to wait till that fever breaks and then start your 24 hour count mm -hmm. and, it, and it is hard you know to have to take time off from work but it's better for everybody because you're not missing your coworkers. Mm -hmm. Kids aren't getting behind in school. Mm -hmm. And if you get the flu, you can be out of work for a full week or more. So and stay home, stay home. <laughs> your coworkers will appreciate it too because <laughs> yes. we don't want it. Um, let's go into uh, pneumonia vaccines. Now, I think there are two different kinds that are available, but I'm not familiar with pneumonia va vaccines. Sure. We often see pneumonia vaccines being offered during flu clinic seasons because we see so many people coming out and getting the shots. So mm -hmm. we try to educate people about pneumonia. It isn't inherent that the flu will give you pneumonia, okay. um, but it can lead to it because you have a weakened system. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are two out there uh, for adults. It For many, many years, it's been what they call Pneumovax 23. It protects you from 23 common strains of the flu and you would get it once before 60 and once again after 65 or at least a five-year waiting period. So if you were 63, you're aging beautifully too. Thank you. You would wait <laughs> until you were 67 to come in and get that flu shot. Okay. Um, and now they've introduced, the CDC um, has indicated and sent out a lot of um, propaganda to tell us Prevnar 13 is also now indicated for adults. It has 13 strains, and there is an overlap between the two vaccines for what they cover, but mm -hmm. there is one vaccine portion of Prevnar 13 that actually is not in the pneumonia 23. 
So the doctors are now re-looking at that and thinking, hmm, we've seen some adults with confirmed cases of that particular strain. Prevnar 13, which had been geared mostly for uh, younger kids, teenagers, mm -hmm. is now indicated for adults. Wow. There is a special procedure and process to taking those two different vaccines. So even if you've had the Pneumovax 23, you should talk to your doctor to find out should I get also the Prevnar 13? Mm -hmm. Some doctors will say yes, some will say no. The ones that will say yes most likely are saying that because you are more prone to any type of a respiratory problem. Okay. You have a lot of health problems, you've got COPD, you've got asthma, anything that affects your lungs as a standard long-term disease that you're trying to manage, mm -hmm. or if you have multiple things, heart disease, diabetes, gout, I mean, just cancer treatments for cancer, mm -hmm. your immune system is weak and they'll often say, you know what, let's let's get you that other vaccine. Okay. Um, but the Prevnar, you need to get two doses of it. So there's a waiting period. And if you've just had your Pneumovax 23, then the rules change about how you get it. So if people have questions, they can always call me at my office um, and I'm more than happy to go over those but you really should talk to your physician to find out, do I need both, do I need one, which mm -hmm. one would you recommend? Okay, well that was gonna be my other question. How does one decide, you know, should I get the, the, the flu shot, should I get um, the pneumonia shot, and how would they go about doing that? You know, some people might not have a regular physician, can they come in and just give you a call and just say, you know, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, do you think I would be a good candidate for it? Yes, absolutely. They can call. I can go over some things, get a few bits and pieces of their health history, um, you know, give them a few tips for what things to ask their doctor. Sometimes mm -hmm. they don't know what to ask their doctor. Right. Um, you know, but as I said, it's, it is important to d have that discussion. Even mm -hmm. if you think you're healthy, you should still find out, should I be getting a pneumonia vaccine? And if so, when? The pneumonia vaccine um, that does 23, which we've seen for years, is not just given to people that are 60 or older. You can give it, it is okay to give it to younger people. Mm -hmm. We just don't tend to think of those people as having issues with your immune system weakening. Right. So again, you know, you just have to decide that range, mm -hmm. um, you know, of which one, which timing, which one's more appropriate. Right, now, if, and you may have already said this and probably would bear repeating, if I get the flu shot in September, mm -hmm. how soon after that can I get the pneumonia shot? You can get the pneumonia shot the same day. You okay. can get, even get it in the same arm. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, some people have uh, muscle ache or soreness in the arm that they get the pneumonia shot. It can be a lot like when you go get your tetanus shot. Mm -hmm. That's just a side effect of that vaccine. It usually goes away in a day or two. Mm -hmm. um, whereas with the flu shot, most people don't even realize I've gotten the flu shot. Oh, you stuck me already? So, you know, they do differ in their possible side effects. Mm -hmm. But you can get it the same day. You could go, you know, I got that information. Now I'm deciding it's two days later. I'm going to go get that flu shot. You still can because they're both inactive vaccines. Mm -hmm. So you, there's no waiting period that you have to have. Okay. It's right. just if you're repeating the doses, there's that waiting period. Mm -hmm. Now you also will host flu clinics. Yes. And is there any particular time period that you do that? And is it open to the public? Or how, do, how does the flu clinic actually work? Well, we're new at trying to set up flu clinics in the Bennington area. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'd like people to know is that we can go to corporations. Mm -hmm. We can go to church sites. We can go to anywhere where there's large gatherings of people that is convenient. You could go to um, any of like the e Eagles, the BPOE. Any of those places mm -hmm. um, can host us. We set up, we clean up when we're done. We usually have clinics for an hour or two. Mm -hmm. So if there's somebody who would like us to come and you know, give the flu shot, mm -hmm. you can call our office and we'll be happy to set it up. Okay. Um, but all of our flu clinics are open to the public. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be 18 or older. Okay. Um, bring your insurance card. Insurance does cover the flu shot under preventative health. Mm -hmm. If you have Medicare and you also have a supplemental insurance, we ask that you bring both because depending on your plan, it gets billed one way or the other. Okay. Um, so we just ask that you bring your cards mm -hmm. and we'll copy the information down and bill directly. If you don't like us having your cards, you can pay cash or check. Um, and we'll post those prices later in the season. Okay. Um, but open to the public, bring everybody. It's, it's a good thing to do. It's a good thing for you, your family, and your community. 
Now, how much space would you need in an area that would be hosting? You don't need that much space, right? We don't need that much space. Um, you know, if we're going to some type of a community center, mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll often put us to one side of a room. Maybe it's a day where they're giving away a free meal mm -hmm. because we like the people that are waiting to be able to have space. Right. But you would be surprised. I can do a flu clinic with one person at one little tiny coffee table. I need two chairs. As, as a basis. Perfect. But if we think it's a large one, it is nice to have a few seats just so that people that have to wait 10 to 15 minutes after getting their shot have a place that's comfortable to sit. Mm -hmm. And the pneumonia shot, I'm assuming that's also covered under yes. insurance we as well? Yes, we will bill insurance as well. Um, it is covered under preventative health for people that are over 65 as well as under. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the common myths that you hear? Now, I have to say that you are a registered nurse. Yes. Okay. So what are some of the, the, the things that you hear out there that you think, okay, that's, that's just a, a myth about the flu? Um, I know we've talked a little bit about it before, but it never really hurts to, you know, give people some more information. Well, the first one I'll repeat is you can't get the flu from the flu shot. <laughs> um, we do have uh, flu vaccines that are egg-free and preservative-free because we have people that will avoid it because of that. Okay. Um, we hear people go, oh, well, I'm young, I'm healthy, I work out every day, I've never had a cold in my life, I've never gotten the flu. I'm here to tell you, it's not true, I have had the flu. Mm -hmm. Came on suddenly in the middle of the night, it was the worst thing. At my doctor's office, I fell asleep, my fever was so high and I was so tired, in the waiting room waiting to be seen. Mm -hmm. So. The flu is a real thing. It can hit anybody at any time, at any age. It doesn't matter how healthy you are no. or how healthy no. you think you are. And the other thing is um, pregnant women mm -hmm. can have the flu shot. It is safe. It does not hurt the fetus. Mm -hmm. It's actually really important to consider that, getting that flu shot, because when your baby's born, they can't get it for those first six months. Mm -hmm. So if you're pregnant and you do like to get the flu shot, um, wait tw at, till 28 weeks or a little bit later if you can, mm -hmm. uh, because you can give a little bit of the immunity um, to the fetus mm -hmm. to protect them. But by far, getting that vaccine, grandparents, babysitters, brothers, sisters, mom, mm -hmm. dad, is very important to protect that baby when it's born. And you were also saying too that people that are, are seeking treatment for other illnesses can still get a different um, type of vaccination for the flu because it's just as good for people who might have something else going on, determined by a doctor, of course, not just by me speaking or by you. <laughs> um, they have to communicate that with you as to what's going on. You know, it's, it can still be very beneficial to somebody yes. who's, who's, you know, immune system might be compromised by something else. Yep. Again, um, under the direction of, you know, the doctor who would be saying, yeah, it might be a good idea for you to, to have it. Yes, and, and it is good to, you know, talk to your doctor about which formulation they think might be good for you out of the trivalent, the quadrivalent, and the high dose, um, which our elderly community likes to call high octane <laughs> um, when you're 65 and older. So it is good to ask the doctors. We have had physicians feel that um, people that are over 65 are more beneficial to getting the quadrivalent than getting the high dose mm -hmm. because it's that extra strain and they're fairly healthy. And then we have other ones say, no, 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 you, you really should just get that high dose because your immune system's so compromised. So if you don't know, the clinic is a great place to come just to get some answers. We always have educational material. We'll give it to you. You can go back to your doctor and then come to another flu clinic later if your physician doesn't have the vaccine and you know get the shot from us. So somebody had a question. Um, what's the best number to call you at? My regular line, my direct line is actually the best number to call, 770. 1536, mm -hmm. but during the flu season, we do have a flu hotline that we update weekly, and it will tell you where the next clinics are and their time mm -hmm. so that you can show up at one that's more convenient for you. And that's 770-1574. Correct. Okay, all right. But they can also visit our website as well, which is www.bavnah.org, bavnah.org, because we'll have listings on that Correct. as well. Um, so what other helpful tips can you give to the, the general public just to, you know, be on guard and trying to help promote the, the flu vaccination? It, it really just comes down to breaking those myths. 
The flu vaccine, you can get it in September. They start releasing it in late August, early September. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll start seeing those signs popping up at the grocery store, the mm -hmm. drugstore, everywhere you go. Um, but you can get it and it will carry you through the season. In Vermont, our season tends to be December, January through March, April. But okay. it doesn't mean we won't see it other times of the year. Mm -hmm. um, if you travel a lot, for work, you're going out of the country, you're right. going to a different portion of the United States. You know, it's good to know, oh, well, I, I haven't gotten it yet and I'm going to a tropical region. Flu is there all year long. Mm -hmm. And the flu shot is available from the day that they release it to us to purchase and start administering until June 30th of the following year. That's okay. when the vaccine expires or we throw it all away and wait for that new batch that's been prepared. Okay. So it's good to get the flu shot at any time. Perfect. during that time frame. But we tend to see those clinics really heavy in October. Okay. So I guess it's gonna be a matter of, you know, watching our website, calling your number, which again is seven 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 zero one five three six. And then the hotline, the flu hotline is seven seven zero one five seven four. Visit our website www.babna.org and you know hopefully we'll we'll be getting out there you know, very shortly and getting some things organized to get those flu clinics going. Um, and that's really all the time that we have for today. And if you would like to know some general information or any other information that uh, the Bennington Area VNA and Hospice has to offer or for upcoming events, please visit our website or you can call our office at 442-5502. And I wanna thank you all for watching.